and that's it. But in an imaginary fantasy battle, in a role-playing game like D&D, we have nearly infinite potential. We can do so much more. Chases, ticking time bombs, endangered bystanders, the list goes on. And since I'm Bob, and this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, I wanted to give you a bunch of example scenarios of what I call alternate combat objectives that you can use in your game for any combat that you want to be truly thrilling instead of just being fun math. This first scenario, and most of them really, have come from comments on my other channel, Bob's RPG Radio, where my wife Grace and I recently posted a whole podcast episode about this topic, but here we go. Number one, the precious target. One commenter shared a story where the player characters were fighting the big bad evil guy of their adventure, but this villain had embedded a magical item into their body, a bowling ball sized stone that all the player characters could see, and in his villainous monologue, the BBEG explained that damaging this item would release a dark magical pestilence killing them all and hundreds if not thousands of innocent people in the city around them. And in a similar story. Another commenter described a combat scenario where an NPC ally of the party was charmed by a witch to attack them. So in both cases, the party could not default to the lowest common denominator of RPG combat, hacking and slashing their way to victory, because they could not attack the very thing that they would normally just be attacking. I wanted to share this alternate combat objective first because it is the most straightforward. The party just needs to subdue an enemy without doing severe damage. This type of scenario forces the players to actually strategize and communicate and rely on lesser used spells or equipment that are designed to weaken, slow, confuse, charm, restrain, or otherwise neutralize the precious target without killing them. Right on to number two, the unconventional chase. I'm calling this unconventional because as you may or may not have seen in this little video of mine, I have pretty much stopped counting squares of movement and using opportunity attacks in D&D 5e. For me and my group, this has been a lot of fun, but I know that many folks really enjoy the tactical nature of tracking movement and positioning, and I also know from many, many people saying it in the comments of another recent video that it's all but impossible to effectively retreat or conduct a thrilling chase scene using the standard movement and combat rules of D&D 5e. Therefore, the unconventional chase is an alternate combat objective where not only are the characters pursuing some target, but it's set up in such a way that the standard movement and combat rules of 5e just do not apply. And hey, if you're already playing a more rules light system than 5e, this is just a conventional chase, like in this example. A commenter described how they were running a campaign using the Star Wars RPG system, where the party was investigating a terrorist organization threatening the CEO of a new tech company. During a showcase of the company's fancy new jetpacks happening on the 50th floor of a skyscraper, I don't really know if this was truly a Star Wars setting or not, the terrorists broke in through a window, grabbed the CEO, and jumped back outside wearing wingsuits. So the party was able to grab the jetpacks and literally chase them down. Not only was this particular chase combined with the precious target scenario, because the PCs also needed to be careful about attacking that one terrorist who was holding the CEO, but like in any good chase, they had to dodge some obstacles. In this case, fireworks that the bad guys were using to cover their escape. So despite the setting of this story, you could easily reskin this exact scenario for a high fantasy RPG like D&D, and while falling out of the sky, the game master has much more freedom to make the chase fun and memorable. But if you're looking for a chase that's a little more traditionally tactical, at the beginning of my group's current campaign in Tomb of Annihilation, we played a one-shot that I wrote partially based on the dinosaur racing rules at the beginning of that book, where your dinosaurs can also attack each other, but as written, they are ignoring attacks of opportunity for a chase. So you should feel more comfortable loosening up the rules of movement during your combat to allow a chase scene to be more fun. And another part of that session that my players really enjoyed was an arena battle, where I wish I used alternate combat objective number three, showboating. Very self-explanatory if you're familiar with the term. According to Google, showboating is the action or practice of showing off. 
he spoiled his World Cup debut with rather too much showboating. But fantasy arena combat is a lot more like professional wrestling than professional soccer. This idea of adding some flair to your character's actions in order to gain the favor of the crowd is actually baked into the rules of X-Crawl Classics RPG, where your professional dungeon crawlers gain mojo points for pulling off stunts. Similar to Daggerheart's hope points, 5e's inspiration, or the popular homebrew rule of hero points, players can spend these points, representing that drive from the onlookers or their allies, to boost a roll and attempt an even cooler move. So this one is also pretty simple, but there's no good reason to not reward your players for being creative with their attacks. And this next one might reward your PCs for not attacking at all. Number four, the non-combat combat. Another commenter shared a story about how they ran a gang war in a town square where the gangs mostly consisted of single hit point minions with some powerful lieutenants and bosses. But instead of just sweeping through the minions and slowing down to fight the bosses, the party also had to save small groups of civilians trapped in the chaos. Each group of civilians were represented by a D6, and saving those civilians meant the player earned that dice and could add it to any roll. This is truly an alternate combat objective because the PCs are encouraged to use some of their actions doing something that doesn't damage or even hinder their opponents at all. And I myself recently helped design a combat scenario like this for a low-level 5e one-shot that I think you can get some more fun ideas from. The premise of the encounter is that an armorer who makes custom magical armor out of monster parts was supplied with troll flesh that wasn't entirely dead. And since we both know how trolls work, the resulting set of reanimated armor starts wreaking havoc in a crowded market square. At the top of each round, the GM chooses or randomly rolls 1d6 for a market mishap, such as hold your horses. Two draft horses break loose in their terror and threaten to overrun a group of commoners at the end of the round. Or shameless reference to the last airbender, my cabbages. Multiple farm market stalls are knocked over in a domino effect. The market is difficult to rain until the end of the round. And fire sale. A fire breaks out, lighting one stall ablaze right next to the party. And hey, this one could actually be useful against the troll skin armor if your party is creative. But then on top of those mishaps already going on during this combat, the adventure includes several alternate objectives that the PCs can perform to help the frightened or wounded townsfolk. And to make sure it didn't feel like a waste of a turn if you failed at your attempt on this heroic deed, we designed this such that failing the check only makes it take a little longer to complete and each one comes with its own reward. For example, DC 12 Wisdom Medicine or any magical healing to tend to the injuries of those crushed in the stampede of panicking shoppers. This display of care attracts one market goer using the Acolyte stat block to follow the adventurer as a loyal apprentice. DC 16 Charisma Deception or Performance Convince the crowd this is all part of an elaborate show and collect 3d6 gold in tips. Plus more mishaps and more heroic actions, including getting a bunch of civilians to safety. So this one-shot adventure is more like a highly detailed encounter wrapped in a concise little story. Not to mention, it provides some very simple guidelines for homebrewing your own custom armor for monster parts. And yeah, this is the part where I say you can download the full PDF with stats and combat tips for the reanimated armor, details and roleplay tips for the new armor or NPC, a new magic item, professionally made maps, and more, all by joining the main builder tier on my Patreon, linked below. It's only available for download until about mid-September, when we'll post something new, but joining Patreon is the best way to support what I do and receive some really cool and useful stuff in the process. Now, that story we were reading includes one other really exciting idea that must be mentioned in a video such as this. Timers. You place or roll a die, usually a d4 or a d6, and every round that passes, you tick down that number. When it reaches one, something wild happens. I guarantee whenever you put a timer die on the table, at least one of your players will instinctively jump to attention. What? What's that for? Timers can make any type of encounter more interesting. For the precious target, the timer indicates when the magic item bomb goes off. For the chase, 
The timer indicates when the bad guys get away or absolutely block the path behind them. Even for showboating, the timer could indicate how many rounds you have before you need to pull off another stunt to maintain the favor of the crowd. In this specific story about a gang war in a town square, those groups of civilians that needed to be saved were represented by randomly rolled D6s, and if the PCs didn't help them reach the edge of the map by the time they ticked down to one, the civilians didn't make it, ultimately hurting the PCs' reputation in the town, but if they were saved, that player got to take that timer D6 and add it to any roll of their choice. To me, that's an extremely efficient and creative use of simple tools, and I love it. Give this video a thumbs up if you agree. And let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a whole video about that kind of encounter design or about one of these other scenarios. But trust me, you ain't seen nothing yet. This final encounter, shared by Koala1507, might be the most efficient and creative use of simple tools for an online game that I've ever heard. Like the previous one using both non-combat combat and timers, this one combines the ideas of claiming a MacGuffin while also needing to stay in a certain area, King of the Hill style. So in honor of the creator, I have dubbed this scenario the Koala Khan, King of the Hill Assault Nexus. To quote their post, the fight took place inside of a cultist base in a round room, around 100 feet in diameter, with the MacGuffin artifact in the middle. After a round of standard combat, one of the cultists ran up to the artifact to try to escape with it, but he fumbled and dropped it. It emitted some wave of energy that teleported everyone within 50 feet of it to a random location, but in the same position relating to each other. We were using Albert Rodeo, so it was easy switching the maps while keeping the tokens exactly where they were. The players had to fight inside of an active volcano, underwater, while falling miles above the ground and in the middle of a jungle infested with dangerous beasts. If someone wasn't within 50 feet of it when it worked, they were left behind so it became less a fight and more of a King of the Hill match, where the players were desperately trying to stay in the range of the artifact while keeping enemies outside. The highlight was definitely a shark ripping a cultist in half and getting teleported into a jungle with everyone. After four rounds of teleporting, having either killed or left behind all the cultists, they finally came back to the starting location. The shark was still there though, and the druid had to polymorph it into a snail so they could release it back into the ocean. It somehow became a reoccurring character. And if that's not an exciting combat encounter, I don't know what is. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment about your favorite ideas below, and check out this video about more RPG combat ideas, and consider becoming a patron to download the Franken Armor 5e one-shot with custom armor guidelines and directly support this channel by doing so. Thank you for your support, and keep building.